Hello and welcome. I'm Ashley and it is my one year YouTube anniversary. Oh my gosh, exciting. One year ago today, I released my very first video. It was a full phase of first impressions. I was timid, I was scared, but I had wanted to start YouTube for 10 years and I finally took the plunge and did it. I am a huge proponent of celebrating your milestones, celebrating progress and growth. I really love a good pat on the back and I am happy to give myself one. So I thought what better way to commemorate this anniversary than by sitting down, trying out some new makeup. We're going to try the Shiseido Synchro Skin Foundation. It's freaking fantastic, by the way. Go ahead and tell you now. And I'm also gonna be showing you guys a really like simple one, two, three step caviar stick eyeshadow routine that you can use with like any shade of the Laura Mercier caviar sticks that you have. Love, love, love this. We live for a simple eye look here. And we're gonna chat about my first year on YouTube, kind of what the journey's been like and just, I don't know, a little bit of reminiscing because I'm, I'm a big softy and a cancer and I love nothing more than reminiscing on this journey of life and the human experience. So yeah, let's, let's dive in guys. Oh my gosh, you guys, it feels, well, it doesn't feel like spring. It's like 45 degrees outside, but it looks like spring and I feel very springy. All right, for my skin prep, I already used the Glow Recipe Dew Drops. I love those and my favorite moisturizer from Renee Rillo and for primer I'm gonna go in with this Laura Mercier pure canvas primer this is the illuminating version I have been loving this for a primer lately I've been using it quite frequently and it's just so beautiful when it comes out it's got like this beautiful champagne kind of shade to it and I find it's just fabulous it also feels a little bit smoothing, which I appreciate because I tend to have a little bit of texture here along the nose. So I am really digging this primer and I kind of just found it by chance. I was shopping for a full face of Laura Mercier video, which I have not done yet, but I'm gonna do next month. I find videos where you do like a full face of one brand, they're so like organized to me. I just love organizing things that way of like, all of this brand in one box and all of this brand in another. I don't know, it just makes sense to me. I love watching those videos, so I definitely want to start making some of those because I find them fun to watch. And what I found is that I often like to make the kind of videos that I like watching. I remember when I first started a year ago, some of the advice that I got was like, make the content that you wanna watch. And that's kind of served me well so far. I am so excited to try this foundation. This is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. I got the shade 160 Shell. I find this interesting, it's a pump. So I did not know that. It says to shake well before use. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Twist cap to unlock and lock pump. Wipe dispenser after use. Okay, so twist, ooh, okay. And I'm gonna pump a couple drops out. You know, I've talked about this before. The first time you use a product, I feel like you have to pump so many times to get it started. And I always feel unprepared for when the product finally comes out. Oh, that one wasn't bad. It was pretty quick. Let's see, let's try it with a sponge. Why not? I'm feeling spongy today. So on that topic of, ooh, shade match is good. On the topic of making, you know, the kind of stuff that you want to see. That's interesting because I feel like that's kind of how beauty biography got started, which when I started my channel a year ago, I had no idea I would end up doing beauty biography. The idea had not come to me or anything like that. And that idea didn't come to me until December. If you haven't seen beauty biography yet, it's my series where we talk about the life of a famous beauty icon. We've done Marilyn Monroe, Ava Gardner most recently, Doris Day. We talk about their life and create an inspired makeup look. And that was not like an original idea like when I started this channel a year ago. It's something that came to me actually in the shower 
back in December, I had been thinking about like, it just felt like I was, I don't know, I felt like I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next on my channel. I kind of felt like I had so many ideas swimming around in my head that it made it hard to pick. It was like, you know, there's this thing called decision fatigue. And basically it's like when you're making so many decisions, your brain can only make a set number of decisions a day. And when you're making like small decisions, those count. Like it doesn't matter if a decision is small or big, they're all decisions and your brain sees it the same way. So that's why a lot of people really thrive with routines. I'm one of those people. And what I found for my channel was that that was kind of happening to me where it's like I had so many ideas that I was kind of having a hard time making like the decisions about which videos to do because I was making those decisions weekly. And I'm definitely like a planner. So I would try to plan videos a month in advance. And then I would find that I was like changing my mind at the last minute and just having a hard time sticking with a plan. So I kind of had this idea in my head. I was like, I need to come up with like a series that I can stick to something that's going to really, you know, combine my passion for makeup and for the experience of makeup. Because to me, I'll tell you, the best compliment I get from you guys is when you leave me a comment and tell me like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. I'm not going to cry, you guys, <laughs> but I might. When you guys tell me like, oh, you know, I watch your videos while I'm doing my makeup. Like when I sit down to do my makeup or get ready for work, I watch your videos. Like that's so incredible to me because for me, the thing that I have always loved about makeup and the reason that I think it became such a big thing for me was because it's a ritual and it's a ritual that we do for ourselves and I can remember like in the toughest years of my life the only time I felt like I had control and had a sense of just steadiness in my life was when I would sit down and do my makeup and that ritual of doing that and taking that time for myself and you know starting with a bare face and you know creating this experience of whatever makeup look it is that I wanted to do was so big to me. And when I would do my makeup, I oftentimes would be, you know, basing my makeup off of like a famous beauty or someone, an actress or someone that I had seen in a magazine. And it's like, I would see this look and I would want to kind of almost evoke the spirit of that look. I almost wanted to like take on that look. So for me, I would always just sit down, do my makeup and that was such a ritual and I would watch my favorite YouTubers. And so to now get comments from people saying that, you know, you guys do that, that you watch me while you're doing your makeup is honestly one of the most just surreal and flattering things ever. I can't even express the gratitude that I feel for that like it's just it's a big deal to me <laughs> by the way the concealer i'm using is the shiseido synchro skin concealer so this kind of matches the the foundation i have been loving this concealer i talked about it in my most recent favorites video it is fantastic it is so good especially if you have dry under eyes you will absolutely love this and the great thing about it is that throughout the day you can just tap it with your finger to refresh it and it really does refresh itself. It's fantastic. I can't say enough good things about it. I do talk more in depth about it in my February favorites. So if you haven't seen that video after you watch this one, definitely check it out. I'm going to contour just a tiny bit, by the way. And we're using the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick in Biscuit. This is just, I mean, it's so fantastic. And they are now available at Sephora, which is awesome because I love a lot of their things. I found their stuff to be kind of hit or miss. So that's another one of those full face videos that I'd like to do at some point. But again, I just, I get so excited about <laughs> all the different video ideas. And that's again, why I was sitting there thinking, okay, what series can I do? So I was in my shower and I just randomly thought about this presentation I did on Joan of Arc when I was in fourth grade. Almost every year in school, we would have one project where we had to study the life of a historical figure or pop culture icon. And we could generally choose, sometimes there were parameters, but generally we could choose. And I loved 
those projects. Those were some of my favorite projects in school. I have always been someone who, if I want to do something, I, I will do it. Like I can really get down to it. If I don't want to do something, it's very difficult to get me to do it. <laughs> and I was definitely that way in school. I, you know, in school, I generally was intelligent enough that I could kind of get away with doing the bare amount of effort needed, like the bare minimum and still get A's, <laughs> which sounds horrible to say. I just was like, I was really good at memorizing things. I was really good at testing. I was just good at all the things that would make it a little bit easier to get through the way that public school in the U.S. is generally structured. But it wasn't like exciting for me or challenging for me or something that I found passionate and I always loved to learn and so I would find a lot of times that I would just want to learn on my own. I would do research on my own and I'd kind of be doing like my own curriculum because I just wasn't all that interested in a lot of the things we were talking about in school. The big exception really was when we would do biographies. We would do these presentations on people's lives. That was the highlight of every school year for me and I would get really into it. I would do an intense amount of research. I would become kind of consumed by learning about these people and trying to understand what made them the way they were and when it came time to do my presentations, I would always insist on dressing up as the person I was giving the presentation on because I just loved that. I've always loved the idea of just learning someone else's experience and connecting to that has been just something that I've always found incredible. And, you know, being inspired by that person's, you know, appearance or I don't know, their style, things like that has always just made me feel more connected to it. So I was in the shower and I had already done a tag called the beauty biography tag that I made up. It was completely different than what beauty biography is now. It was just a tag where I talked about like, you know, what skin type I had and my hair type and things like that. And that name had kind of stuck with me and I realized, oh my gosh, that's what I should do. I should talk about these incredible people. I love researching especially women, no offense to men, but I love researching women, iconic women. I'm like, I was like, I should research them and talk about it and share this. Like I would watch that. Maybe somebody else would watch that. And if they don't, at least I'll be having a fun time doing it. So that's kind of how Beauty Biography was born. And it's just been so exciting to, to see it come to life. And I feel like every time I do one, I'm just getting better at it and more sure of myself. And the feedback that I get from you guys is so amazing. It's just the bomb. All right, I'm going to talk about what I'm putting on my eyes because I want to use caviar sticks today. Oh my gosh, I love caviar sticks. I have all of mine in this Laura Mercier pouch that I got. This was available at Sephora. If it still is, I'll link it down below. It was basically a deal where you got the tinted moisturizer, a little sample size of primer in this bag, this little makeup bag, which is actually a really nice makeup bag. It has like a little pocket here and then a zipper pocket here. This is where I put all of my caviar sticks and my cream eyeshadow sticks from other brands, although caviar sticks are my absolute favorite. So you got the bag, the tinted moisturizer, and the little primer sample for the same price that the tinted moisturizer normally would be, which I live for a deal where I get a bag. I have so many makeup bags, like travel makeup bags. I have a full collection. Let me know if you want to see them at some point because I've got a lot. So I went with a little bit of like a pinky purpley look today. So I think I'm going to start with... Mm, I'm gonna start with the medium shade. I'm gonna use a lightest shade, a darker shade, and then one that's kind of in the middle. So I think I'm gonna start with the one in the middle first. The middle, middle, sounded funny when I said that. So this is burnished bronze. I've talked about this one before. It's a really cool bronzy color that has like a burgundy to it. It's right there in the middle. And the fun thing about caviar sticks, I've got the three colors that I'm gonna use today right there on my hand. I love that I can swatch the colors on my hand and kind of come up with combos that way. And these are so easy to work with. It just, it makes doing my makeup fun, which is what I want in life. I want to have fun while doing my makeup. I don't want it to be a chore. So I'm gonna start with the burnished bronze and I'm kind of gonna go, let's do like an outer V type of deal. 
you don't have to put a ton on you don't have to be super precise but I'm gonna blend this out like up into my crease on like the outer half of my eye I find with the caviar sticks if you start with a little bit you can always build it up and I think it looks a lot more blended and smoked out when you start with a little bit at a time. I don't like to like throw on a ton at one time because that just makes it blend out not as nicely. And these blend like a dream as long as you go, you know, just a bit at a time. So pulling that up into my crease. Oh, I absolutely love, love, love these caviar sticks. Gosh darn it. They are fantastic. All right, let's do the other eye. Let me guys know, let me guys know, <laughs> you guys, let me know in the comments below. Do you generally do like one eye all the way and then do the other eye all the way? Or do you do like this step on this side and then again on this side, you know, like go step by step or do you go eye by eye? I go step by step generally. I find that if I do this eye all the way through and then do this one, they're not gonna be even because I'm gonna end up forgetting <laughs> what I did. <laughs> I swear, I used to have a really good memory and then I had a child and now I don't remember. All right, we're gonna put burnished bronze away for now. I'm just gonna finish making sure this is all blended and looks pretty even quite happy with it and we're gonna go on to use the darkest shade next this is gonna be like my liner shade I have a little bit of a lisp I just switched uh, a liner trace <laughs> on my Invisalign so still adjusting this is plum so it's a nice deep plum color I'm gonna use this as like a little bit of a liner I'm just gonna kind of make like almost like kind of like it looked like a wing and then I'm gonna smudge it out a little bit and I think I'm gonna smudge it out with a pencil brush if I can find one ah yes I did here's a pencil brush and I'm just when I do smudging like this I kind of just follow the wing shape that I want to make but obviously I just want it to be very smudgy smoky because it is a cream shadow I'm not expecting it to be like any kind of actual wing. I just want it to have that shape, but in a very hazy kind of way. Ooh, I love that. All right, now on this inner corner and on the lid here, I'm gonna go in with intense rose gold, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's intense and rose gold. These are very like metallic-y ones. Oh, I just switched it up and did this one first. That's totally cool though. These shades, the one that say intense in front of them are like a very metal kind of finish. I absolutely love them. These are some of my favorite shades. I think they're just so beautiful. They have such a shift to them. And I love these for like this exact eye look. Doing this, like the medium shade, then the dark shade as a liner, and then this lighter shade here on the mobile lid, like on the first two thirds of the mobile lid, this formula works with like any combination of caviar stick you can think of or cream shadow stick if you want to try a different brand. These are just my favorite. The Laura Mercier caviar sticks are my absolute favorite cream shadow stick. They're so easy to work with. They don't dry down too fast. And the color selection is just amazing. But you can do this same formula with really any kind of combination of shades that you want to. And that to me is fantastic because I love to like sit down, do my makeup. Like I said, I love the experience of it, but I don't necessarily always want to like have to be sitting there trying to like engineer a way to <laughs> like a reinvent the wheel, if you will. I, I like tried and true kind of formulas and switching those up because then I know that like if I have a framework that works for my face and works for kind of my makeup style, which I would definitely say for me, my makeup style is probably pretty classic. I don't tend to go super colorful. I don't tend to go super dramatic. I like to pick one thing to really enhance in a day and go with that. And I like everything to be very flattering and very pretty. So if I can find a look that 
rests neatly within that framework and makes me feel good, then I will take that formula and just switch things up and experiment with new products, some new color, kind of color tones, things like that, but keeping with that same formula that I know works for me. For eyebrows, I'm using the same products that I think I've used for almost a year now. The Dior Show Brow Styler and the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. These are the best brow products to me. I don't like to change them up very much. I trust them and they're just fantastic. I found these very early into my first year of YouTube and I have yet to find anything that I like as much as I like these. They're just fantastic. And again, the sun wants to go away, but why? Why, Mr. Sun? So I went back and watched my very first YouTube video and I was not as mortified as I expected to be. I definitely though see how kind of like soft-spoken and timid I was. It's definitely such an adjustment to speak in front of a camera. You don't really realize like, they say that the camera takes like 50% of your energy and that's totally true. I had no idea how like timid I was, but that has just really kind of worn off as the year has gone on. I feel so much more comfortable and it's definitely different starting out when you're like, okay, is anyone going to watch this at all? Am I speaking to anyone or am I just speaking to myself? Like at this point now, I know so many of you that leave me these lovely comments and so it's like, okay, I know I'm not speaking to myself now, which is really such a relief because talking to yourself, you know, I talk to myself all day, to be honest, but I don't know if other people do. <laughs> and before YouTube, I didn't really talk to myself on camera. I just talked to myself inside of my head. And that first video, I filmed that first video last year, right before everything went crazy. Like when I filmed that video, we were all still being told that like, this illness was not really anything to worry about and that you know we all still thought that like okay like this is yeah this is probably going to be annoying maybe but it's not really going to affect anything and then when i published the video um by the time i published the video because there was you know a few days in between of editing it and getting it ready by the time i published the video we were you know not we were not supposed to go anywhere and the world had completely changed and i was like all of you thinking, okay, this isn't gonna last that long though. We'll stay home for a month and then everything's gonna go back to normal. So there's definitely, I think, a little something unique about having my first year on YouTube coincide with what the past year has been. This past year has definitely shaped how I measure my own growth and my own progress and how hard I am on myself. I've definitely learned to to be more appreciative for the things I have, more appreciative of the opportunity to do something that I enjoy doing. And just the fact that, you know, I was happy a year ago, I really was. But now I have to tell you, like I get up every day that I'm gonna film or edit or publish a video and I have such a purpose that I don't know if I would have had this opportunity you know, if I wasn't working from home, which so many people are, if I, you know, didn't have that opportunity to work from home and do things from home, would I have been able to do this? I don't know. And it's just such a blessing to me that I have found something that fulfills me in this way. And it's funny because I look back on it and I've said it before, I wanted to do this for 10 years and I didn't. I was so nervous too about what other people would think and more than that what I was nervous about was being vulnerable we're going to talk about vulnerability as we do our cheeks for cheeks I'm going to use the pillow talk beauty light one from Charlotte Tilbury I'm putting this on first before I put on my blush I saw someone do that on you on Instagram Megan Lombardi is her name I'll put her name in the description box below and on the screen on Instagram. I saw her do this and I was like, wow, that's amazing. I want to do that. So now I do it and it's fantastic. So I'm going to be doing that and then I'm going to use Nearly Rose from Rare Beauty. I love these blushes. They're fantastic and I haven't used Nearly Rose yet, but I'm excited to. So vulnerability. I was, you know, it's funny. I've said before that I am a recovering perfectionist 
And the thing is, it took me, I think this whole past year to realize that perfectionism for me was really a defense mechanism against being vulnerable. Because if I didn't put myself out there, then I felt like I was protecting myself. And perfectionism really holds you back from, from sharing, from putting anything out into the world. And to me, one of the most vulnerable things you can do is, is create, to create things you know, and that's not just videos. I mean, people who write books, people who do anything where they're creating something. Think about if you've ever done a project at work that you really, really put yourself into, really just dedicated a ton of time and energy to. That made you vulnerable because that kind of becomes like your baby because you put so much work into it. And then for those of us who have children, think of the most vulnerable, the area that you're most vulnerable in your life your children because you literally created them. So it's like the most vulnerable thing in the world is to share something that you have created. And there's an extreme vulnerability in doing that. And I think that for years I was a perfectionist, not realizing that that was my way of keeping myself from ever putting too much out there or putting myself in a vulnerable position. There were two books that like really helped me with that. I've talked about them before, but I just, you know, I'm reflecting because this is such a milestone for me to have done this for a year. I just, I feel like it has to be celebrated. I feel like I had to mark it in some way. And so I do just wanna again mention those. The first is Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. And then the second is Take Control of Your Life by Mel Robbins. And so I say that because I know there are so many people just like me who not like, oh, YouTube is the thing that they were wanting to do for a long time. But I feel like so many women have kind of dreams and things that they want to do or something that they've always felt called to do and they've let things hold them back and I just want to say that a year later like I couldn't be happier I'm gonna lose my voice here I couldn't be happier that I finally did it and I'm doing it and every day I wake up so excited about that and it sounds cheesy but it's just the best place to be in to to have something that you are passionate about doing I know a lot of you do have something that you're passionate about doing but if you don't if there's something that you feel you could be passionate about doing but you haven't done it yet do it I'm gonna use the Shiseido powder to powder my face. I really have been loving everything I've tried from Shiseido. I'm kind of surprised that it took me so long to to try anything from them. When I was, I was used to be a rep for Chanel and I knew a lot of the other brand reps and I really liked the Shiseido brand rep. It's funny because now so many of my opinions on beauty brands are based on the reps that I worked with and like, did I like their rep or did I not like their rep? Like I didn't really like the Dior rep. I hope she never sees this video. I didn't really like her. And so for a long time, I was like, I didn't want to try Dior things. And now I really like a lot of the things I've tried, even though I'm really not a fan of their foundation because they insist on putting fragrance in them, which is just not for me. I am not a big fan of fragranced foundations at all. I wish people wouldn't do that. But I really liked the Shiseido rub, so I'm surprised that it took me so long to try some of their stuff. And I'm extremely impressed with the Synchro Skin Line. Like this foundation looks fantastic, super skin-like, super smooth, and it looks really fresh without being too wet looking. I don't feel like it's gonna slide off my face. It feels like it's it's there. It just looks very, very fresh. I definitely feel ready for spring, you guys. I'm so excited. I've got my green on for St. Patrick's Day. We're celebrating my one year YouTube anniversary. My, my parents are here visiting. And so we're all going out to eat tonight to celebrate. And I'm really excited. Let's see, what do we wanna finish with? I feel like I want a little bit more blush. More blush, never hurt. I'm gonna use the Shantikai Rose Whale Shark Duo. It has a highlight in here. I'm gonna use the lovely blush because it's a nice like ingenue pink, so it goes perfectly with that nearly rose blush from Rare Beauty. The double blush is something I have become new to. My lovely friend Kate introduced me to that. Also, 
when you're on YouTube, I've made friends. I can't count the last time I had made a friend. I lost a very dear friend in my early 20s and it was really difficult for me to make friends after that. And so this year has just opened my life up to a lot of things. And again, it's just so crazy to see how much my life has transformed in the past year in ways that aren't related to the pandemic and then the ways that it is related. It's just, it's something I'm still processing, but I'm incredibly grateful for the life I have today. So much so that I sometimes get nervous, you guys. Do you ever, I don't know if other people do this. Sometimes when life is going really well, I get very nervous. Like, oh my gosh, it's like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I used to have a really hard time enjoying things because I felt like scared of like what would be around the corner just my anxiety would kick in and I'm noticing now that I'm able to acknowledge those anxieties and just let them go like they're there okay cool I've learned to not fight them just allow them to exist and in allowing them to exist and refusing to argue with them or you know participate with them, just refusing to have a conversation. If you've ever had like a nagging thing in your head, like a nagging worry, and it's like this voice telling you something, I used to always argue back with the voice and be like, well, here's the reasons that's not right. And I learned that, actually in therapy, I learned that arguing back with that voice just validates it. So what I've learned to do is be like, okay, you're wrong, but okay, okay. Just, I don't feed it. I don't argue with that voice. I acknowledge it, let it exist, and doing that rather than arguing with it generally helps it go away a lot faster. Okay, lips. We're pulling out the Lippy Pencil Cup. I talked about this in my favorites last month too. We're gonna pick a color. I want something mauve pinky as usual. When do I not want something mauve pinky? This is my favorite one. We're gonna use, use the favorite. It's Lumiere. Oh no, let's try a snap. I lied. Let's try a snap. This looks pretty. This looks like a mauve nude. Hmm. Let's try it. This lip pencil cup is amazing. And it's a little browner than I thought. But I can live with that. This is a really good nude shade. I live for a nude. I literally Googled. I do this sometimes. I literally Googled before I started my makeup today, like what colors to wear with jade green. And I found a really good article. And it said to do like a smoky eye with a nude lip. I mean, my eye's not too smoky. It's, it's quite soft, but it's got some haze going on. And this nude is actually fantastic. I'm gonna look so lovely for my celebration dinner. I think that I have to say that the one thing that I've realized I miss most about going out to dinner is the getting ready to go out to dinner. <laughs> We've gone out to dinner like twice in the last year. All right, for lips, for lip gloss, we're gonna use Bear Baby from Laura Mercier. This is a new one I got. It looked very much like a, like a light milky pink, which I love to use over lip liner. And because of my Invisalign, I've been using basically lip liner and lip gloss as my lip combos because any lipstick comes off on the Invisalign. It's impossible not to. If you watch Beauty Biography, you'll notice that at the end, well, you probably don't notice, but at the end when I'm doing the lipstick and then I'm doing like my outro, I have my Invisalign out because I have to take it out to be able to wear the lipstick. <laughs> All right, one year anniversary. It would not be complete if I didn't use the best setting spray of all time. I haven't talked about this in forever, but it is my fave. It's the Cover FX High Performance Setting Spray. This is the bomb. If you are like me and you notice that like your makeup looks better like once you've had it on for about an hour or two and you know it's really melted into the skin, this helps speed up that process for me. It makes my makeup stay a little bit longer, but the big thing I love it for is it makes my makeup look more like morphed into my skin. So yeah, love this stuff. I haven't used this in so long that it's like stuck. Ta-da! Do I wanna wear this headband or not? I think I'm gonna stick with the headband, you guys. I feel like an angel. 